Hey guys, welcome. So I've been working on a project for around three, four weeks now. Um, it's been a, uh, a, a Raspberry Pi, RetroPie, Game Gear um, sort of setup console. And it, it's been a, a bit of a hassle, but I finally got it finished. And I thought now would be a good time just to explain some of the problems that I had so if someone was trying to do the same thing, what they might hit as well. Um, and a bit about some of the decisions I made and why. So this is the inside. What you're seeing here is the, the inside finish. Now I've been testing this for the last couple of days just to make sure it works, which it does, which is brilliant. Um, but a number of things that I, I roadblocks I hit or problems I had, um, that I had to get through, um, some of which are slightly more costly than others. So let's start with the um, how this thing is powered. So I've taken a, um, a 1860 um, battery. So these are um, 3.7 volts. They, um, this one particular is about 3,000, I think, milliamp hours. Um, it's just an old one that I would use for a um, electronic cigarette. Uh, it's just in a standard battery holder there. Underneath here, we have, um, this is just held in like that, but you can, kind of see that under there. That board is, um, it bumps the 3.7 volts up to, well it can bump them all the way up to 12 volts, but I've got it set to bump it up to just over 5 volts. It's basically got um, an input for the battery, um, an input for the charger, and then an output for whatever you want to charge. And that sits underneath the battery. It just gets held down by the battery, because once the case is on, nothing's moving. It has um, a particular chip on here. It has two LEDs already, one that would indicate um, charging and one that would indicate fully charged. And um, that they're obviously surface mount, which was a little bit of an irritation. So what I ended up doing with this was, um, I looked up the chip that's on the board um, and there's two pins on that chip that both basically get grounded when one of them two um, situations is met. So it's either fully charged um, or it's being charged. And then I've run them off to a separate bit. They go through to the power board and they go through to an RGB LED at the front. So that means that when you plug it in, you can see that it's charging or it's charged. And so obviously these, as I said, go through to a power board. So I had the original power board and the original sound board that came with um, the Sega Game Gear. Problem was, um, both I repair a lot of these, and both of them had seen better days. They were ones that I, I didn't want to put into a client's um, repair. So for that reason, um, I couldn't quite get them working, but I, I decided to scavenge them for parts and try and build my own boards. Now, for the power board, that made sense, because the power board, or the original power board anyway, um, creates voltages all the way up to 30 uh, 31, 32 volts, which we don't need, and I don't actually want anywhere near my Raspberry Pi. So this allowed me to come up with a slightly different design. Um, most of the, the wiring is underneath um, these prototype boards, um, with just the top showing, just keeps it a little bit more neat and tidy. I've still put the original battery connectors on, they don't serve any purpose other than holding it in and just giving it the same look and feel. Um, I did debate using the battery compartment here for something, um, but in the end decided against it, didn't really need, need to, and it just was more cutting and more filling. So what this power board has is the original switch and the original switch cover um, and when it's in the um, the on position obviously it's supplying the output power of this to the Raspberry Pi directly. Um, it's also when that's on putting through um, another line which is powering um, the Get it, the, the RGB LED, um, that puts it blue. So basically the free states for the RGB LED at the front are either blue, it's on, red, it's charging, or green, it's charged. Board soundboard here, using the original potentiometer um, from the original Game Gear, um, and input jack, and speaker um, connector. I ended up building my own amplifier circuit for this because um, the original soundboard wasn't working at all, so I took the components and just made my own soundboard. Um, this just uses two uh, transistors and capacitors um, to pull up the sound coming out of the Pi up to something that's kind of reasonable to use. Anymore. This needs a, this amplifier board needs a 5 volt power supply. I've got it coming from the Pi now. When I originally built this, I took the power directly from the power board and it was causing some buzzing. Um, 
you could hear it over the speaker quite badly. So now I've changed it so I'm getting it from the same where the audio is coming from, from the Pi, it's a lot cleaner. So I would recommend if you're going to do something like this with a custom power board, uh, soundboard, get your power from the Pi or as close to wherever the source is coming from as possible. So that's my board underneath and it looks really basic. Um, I, I did three different versions of this. Uh, I actually added, and you'll see here, there's an extra two buttons added, and these were done, so I had two cases that were broken, they had broken lugs. Um, this one was fine, the other one had broken lugs, um, so it wasn't really suitable for a repair. Um, and I was keeping it for spares, I think I used the screen and some of the um, the D-pad for a spare for one that's broken, so I had these spare. Um, I cut off the channels that the buttons come through, I've seen people 3D print them and that's fine, I don't know a 3D printer so that wasn't really an option. Um, just cut out some holes and put them in and that kind of works when we um, when you look up at the upside down there's yeah an extra extra row of buttons still not quite as many buttons as I'd like there's no select button um, there's obviously no shoulder buttons either I wanted this to kind of look as much like an original as possible I didn't want all these brightly colored buttons um, so originally with this board I tried creating copper tracks and cutting these tracks really thin, really fine and going all the way around and, and basically you can see here we've got some holes um, where I had them on like a header and with a multimeter it appeared to work fine um, but I just could not get it to work with the Pi. It was almost like the, the slight resistance changes were just really confusing the Pi. Um, when I was hitting one button it was hitting another. Um, once I had the correct pull down um, resistors enabled it was still the same so I tried that um, I, I really wasn't sure so I, I pulled it all off and I thought right I'm just gonna go as, as simple as I can so these are just single copper I, I, FYI I think a lot of the problem was the way when you connect two copper tracks this is just copper tape when you co uh, put them over each other I think it causes some problems because um, sometimes they would connect and they would show continuity and then I'd come back later that day and there'd be no continuity so it was yeah I wasn't really sure I even tried soldering over all the, the joins I just gave up in the end um, so these just have basic tracks and then the, each side has its own ground on there um, with all the wires coming that way and do you know what that works I'm not going to question it I don't ever want to mess around doing this again I'm going to put this back together and then we'll have a little play on it so now we're back together and as you can see the only difference visually from the outside we've got two extra buttons kind of needed if you want to play PlayStation games or at least something. No shoulder buttons or any extra buttons, not yet anyway. I didn't want any brightly coloured buttons at the back like I've seen. I just want it to visually look very similar to an original. Um, it doesn't have an original uh, lens, this is a glass lens um, for no real reason other than that's all I had lying around. Um, Obviously, expansion um, cover needs to be. I, I might wait until I've got a 3D printer and print something that will fit in there nicely. Instead of the DC jack, we've got a USB jack here. Um, and obviously, no brightness control at the side. But bar that, it visually looks exactly the same. In fact, here is an original for comparison. And I don't think there's really a lot to compare. uses a lot of the same equipment. So, plugging in a USB cable into here. We get a red light. It indicates that it's charging. So, what it'd be red while charging, it'll go green once the battery inside is fully charged. If we switch it on, Obviously the power light is blue when we're running. Obviously the headphone jack works the same way it would normally do and you plug it in it cuts audio to the external speaker. For some reason it still complains it's not got enough power. I don't think the, the board puts out enough amps. I think this probably wants about two and a half milliamps and uh, this board is only managing about two. But I've not noticed any problems. Small amount of input lag the controls but I guess when you're emulated that's just part of it. I 
and I think I set up a shortcut. It doesn't seem to always do what it should. There you go. Pressing start and this button should take you back to the menu. And this will even play something like Crash Bandicoot. So yeah, I mean, perfectly playable. Um, I don't think the D-pad's as good as the original PlayStation ones, but it works. So yeah. And if I do want to shut it down, I can go back to the menu and just shut down manually like this. So there we go, Raspberry Pi Game Gear, done. One less thing, one less project for me to finish. I don't think I'm going to do any more bits of this, there's things I wanted to do, I wanted to kind of make that into a USB socket, have it so that it would host its own, have a switch that would turn on Wi-Fi allowing you to log into it or not, um, save battery, but battery life even with the Wi-Fi being on is pretty good, I think playing it lasted about four hours yesterday before it died. So. Do you know what? Four hours of playtime. Can't really complain at that. That's that's reasonable in my my in my mind, especially when the original batteries are not being used. There we go. Let us know what you think in the comments.